And at this point, I should say, I really have no interest in quartz watches. That's what I said in my first video, but I didn't stick to that position and it may have been a mistake. Since I started collecting watches, I've seen a lot of talk about Casio G-Shocks. People seem to love them and relish new releases. Now I had Casio watches many years ago. I remember one with the calculator. I also had one called the data bank where you could store information. So I thought maybe I should add a G-Shock to my collection and I decided to get one. Stay tuned to discover the three reasons why my G-Shock purchase may have been a mistake. The first issue I had is that there are so many different G-Shocks. It was hard to systematically review all of them to see what I might want. I looked at several videos and different listings of the watches. But I decided if I was going to get one, I wanted one with a lot of sensors. So I landed on the Golfmaster model GWN1000B and I purchased it from Amazon for just under $350. This model has a lot of cool features. Four sensors, temperature, barometer, altitude, and compass. It receives radio time updates using multiband six. It shows tide levels. It charges its battery through solar panel. And of course it has all the other time related features. Alarm, stopwatch, multi-time zone. It shows time in both digital and analog readouts. Plus it has a light up dial and it has a sub dial for time and barometer indicators. A very jam packed watch. So much so that the hands will actually move out of the way to allow you to see the digital readout and sub dial when you're activating those features. It's a large watch at 55 millimeter, but it fits very nicely on the wrist with a comfortable rubber strap. Four buttons and a screw down crown for additional functionality. It's got 200 meters of water resistance. All in all, it's a very tough watch. This brings me to my second issue. This is a complex watch. The user manual is over a hundred pages. Yeah, there are simple G-Shocks, but I wanted something with a lot of features. I actually downloaded a PDF version of the manual and put it on my iPhone so I could reference it when I'm not at home. I read through the manual, but don't remember how to use many of the features or adjust the sensors. Maybe over time I'll figure it out. I guess if this is your main watch and you use the features regularly, you'll figure out and remember what everything does. But I'll probably wear this watch for its week on the wrist rotation every couple months. So I may never remember everything. And finally, although these features are cool to have on the wrist, I have an iPhone which can perform all of these features and get me all of the same sensor information that this watch can with a much more friendly user interface. So why do I need this watch where I have to learn and remember how to use it? So there you have it. Yes, I know there are a lot of G-Shock lovers and collectors out there. And that's a great area to focus on for your collection. But I don't think it fits into my collecting scope. Will I sell the watch? Probably not right away. I'll stick with it for some time and see if it grows on me. Thanks for watching. And let me know your thoughts on G-Shocks in the comments below. And remember, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.